Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. Actually, welcome to a new video series where I will show you in as much detail as possible how I designed my most recent app for artists. If you're new here, my name is Daria. I'm a self-taught graphic designer and illustrator. And in my free time, I make YouTube vlogs. So if you feel like binge watching some relaxing drawing process videos, you're very welcome to visit my channel. But now back to the app. It all started around four months ago when I was, yet again, going through a creative blog. You might think that artists and other creatives are exactly the kind of people who should be overflowing with inspiration and ideas, but in reality, it's a problem that we struggle with on a regular basis. Usually when I'm in this state of emptiness, when nothing really excites me and nothing comes to my mind, I like to go online and search for some drawing challenges, like prompt lists and draw this in your styles. If you are not familiar with those, these are challenges that are often organized by artists on social media like Instagram, where a hosting artist provides a drawing reference or a drawing theme for other artists to follow. The participants then share their interpretations of these prompts and references. And I love these challenges because they take off the pressure of figuring out what to draw. You also get a lot of inspiration and learning value from seeing how different artists interpreted the same starting reference. The problem is that challenges like this are scattered across the internet and sometimes they're really hard to come by. Especially these days with the ever-changing Instagram algorithm, you might open it just for two minutes to check your feed and find yourself stuck on reels having scrolled to the absolute bottom of the internet. And that's when I thought, what if there was a separate app offering exactly that? Daily art challenges and inspiration available to you, accessible to you at any point in time. And that's pretty much how the concept of the app came to be. A creativity app with lots of drawing prompts, exercises, tasks, a variety of challenges to keep you excited about practicing your art daily. So soon enough, I was working on the design of the app and my husband David started with the technical implementation. From the functionality point of view, there are lots of exciting ideas that we are planning for the future, but for the beginning, we decided to keep it simple. Essentially, the app can be split into four major parts. The daily drawing challenge, the random prompt generator, community, and the art blog. Daily drawing challenge, as the name suggests, is some kind of exercise over daily. Rather than just making it a word-based reference every single day, I wanted to bring variety with color palette-based challenges, um, illustration references, other kinds of creativity tasks, so that people get excited about finding out what the next challenge is going to be. At the same time, I thought it would be cool to have more drawing ideas, not just once a day, but at any point in time. And that's where my idea for the random prompt generator comes from. The random prompt generator builds a drawing prompt consisting of three parts, each answering questions, who, where, does what, respectively. Each part can be regenerated an infinite number of times and the prompts you like can be saved for later. The saving functionality is also very important for challenges because it allows users to build their individual pool of inspiration that they can later return to. The third part of the app is the art blog, which to me was a very natural addition to the app. And I planned all kinds of articles from learning materials to working on your creativity and working on your mental health and so on. As you might have already figured out, this app is very demanding when it comes to content creation. If you think about it, a year's worth of daily challenges is a whopping 365 exercises. The random prompt generator requires hundreds of entries to work efficiently not even talking about all the blog articles that need to be researched and written. I do, however, have a history of making my life harder for no particular reason, so it shouldn't be a problem. Lastly, we come to the community, and that's something that I really wanted to implement early on. The most fun part of completing the challenges is doing them together with other people. 
So I wanted to give our users a, the possibility to share their own challenges in the app and B, to showcase the completed challenges by our users in the app. For now, we are just going to use Instagram as a sharing platform and link Instagram posts within the app because building an app that's a social media platform is on a whole other level of complexity. In the future, however, we consider um, implementing the functionality that allows our users to upload maybe a photo or an image of a completed challenge into their profile and perhaps share it with other artists. I'm going to talk much more about design in the future videos, but for now I want to give a rough idea of the direction in which the app was going. Um, unlike some other projects I've already worked on together with my husband, this time I had full freedom and control over the design of the app, which was both very um, exciting and overwhelming. I felt like a creativity app needs to look really fun and explode with colors and textures and shapes. But at the same time, I really wanted to avoid overloading it and making it too much, which was definitely not an easy task. In the beginning, I just looked up some designs on Dribbble and figure out the general theme I want to go for. One thing I knew from the beginning is that I want to use a grid texture in the background of the app, since it's something that reminded me of scribbling in my notebooks back at school and I thought it just fits so well into the concept of the app. In the next videos, I will talk about the design in more detail. It wasn't until two or three weeks into the project that I found the name for the app that I like. I feel like it's a very natural process in app development where as you define the concept of the app more and more, these missing pieces of the puzzle just keep coming together. The problem with this particular project was that any related keyword you can think of was already heavily overused by all kinds of digital products. Art, creativity, drawing, inspiration. There are just so many apps that would try and use these words as a part of their product names. Think of journaling apps, sketchbook apps, learning apps, even game apps for kids. And having a strong keyword as a part of your app name comes at a big advantage as it allows users to quickly identify what your product is all about and it helps to build stronger brand recognition. You could also try and come up with a very common and very recognizable association that can be tied to the concept of your app. One example that I really like and I personally find it genius is Honeypot, which is developer job platform. But of course, things like that are much harder to come up with. And um, it's a matter of luck if they're already taken or not. Talking about names being taken, have you ever tried looking for a free .com domain? It's a very humbling experience. And as we find ourselves in year 2024, it's slowly becoming a mission impossible. Anyways, the moment I started to think about the app name, I couldn't stop thinking about it for several weeks. What really helps is writing down everything that comes to your mind. Every keyword, every idea, every related concept, even if it doesn't seem right at first glance. It might even be some alternative spelling that does the trick for you or some wordplay. I just had this note on my phone that I would add to every time I had a thought. On one hand, I wanted it to have something to do with drawing, painting, sketching, a word like that. And on the other hand, I wanted to depict this moment of being struck by an idea, kind of this aha moment. So I just spent days letting this run in the background of my mind and constantly writing down everything that that came to my mind and yeah, after a few weeks I came up with the name I'll Sketch, and to my utter disbelief the .com domain was still free, so we bought it right away. And it was one of those rare moments when um, the name just felt right from the beginning and I never in later stages thought of coming back and changing something. It just merged so well with the concept of the app and it was really easy for me to build that brand identity upon it. 
This wraps up the short introduction to the series. Now Sketch is already out on iOS and Android, so you can check it out if you'd like to. The link is in my channel bio. In the next videos, I will talk more about wireframing, logo design, illustrations, and other fun things. So yeah, stay tuned, consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss any updates, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.